back to life, back to reality. Crystal Palace won, Tottenham Hotspur nil. That was the full-time score yesterday at Sellers Park. A pathetic display from Ange Postecoglou's side from minute one up until minute 90. We were slow, we were sloppy, we were lethargic. We were so slow at times I nearly called up Sky and asked why my internet wasn't working properly. If our players fell into a barrel of tits yesterday, they would come out sucking their own thumbs. They didn't want it. There was a lack of passion, lack of fight. Nothing was going our way, as I say. It was just an absolute pile of pygmy hippo feces left out on that pitch yesterday by our manager and by our players. And everyone at this football club is to blame for yesterday's result. And performance. It's going to be hard to dissect this game like I always do in the debrief, you know, go through tactics and things because it's simple. Crystal Palace played a very similar game to us and they wanted it more. They pressed us high. We couldn't play out from the back, as I say, and when they sat back, we couldn't break through them. But look, I've wrote down a few bullet points and the first one I want to go through is something that I've seen being debated and talked about across all Spurs socials. Who is to blame for yesterday? Is Ange Postecoglou to blame or is it on the players? Because for me, if you are blaming yesterday on one individual at the football club, then you're a knobhead. It is not all on Ange Postacoglu. It is not all on Timo Werner. It is not all on Vicario. It is not all on Van der Ven, Romero. It is on all 11 of those players and the manager. The players didn't want it yesterday. They didn't turn up. There was a lack of effort, a lack of fight, a lack of passion, as I say. And of course, Ange Postacoglu would have told them to do different to what they did yesterday. He would have told them to tactically be set up better and more well-structured. And the players, as I say, didn't turn up and didn't do what he wanted them to yesterday. The players were pathetic. It wasn't good enough from any of our players. Romero, Van der Ven, Udogi, Porro, Vicario, Kulisevsky, Pesuma, Madison, Johnson... Mikey Moore even, I don't want to be too harsh on the kid though after his display on Thursday, he's only 17, and Solanke, not one of our players played well yesterday, not one, but it is also on Ange Postecoglou, just like the Brighton game for his lack of good decision making when things are going tits up in front of his own two eyes, the first half was an absolute disgrace, make the changes at half time, you did against West Ham, and that's why I praised him, that's why I started to believe in this false dawn of hope again, because finally, you know, the performances, which have been fairly good all season for the most part, are actually matching the results, you know. We're getting results, Ange's making big decisions, he's tweaking things, fair play. But the Brighton game brought us back down to reality again, that, as I say, he doesn't do it consistently enough. Then we have the West Ham and Alkmaar game, and I think was that Brighton game, you know, a little blip. Are we finally clicking, you know, is this going to be eight wins in nine? And then yesterday happens, we're 1-0 down, half-time, and he makes no changes. Why is he not making changes? Oh, you know, the game ended 1-0, so it didn't change much at the beginning of the second half, because we got lucky, because Eze was offside, as I say. Because Crystal Palace were cutting through us like a hot knife through butter at the beginning of that second half. We were more open than a lady at the gynecologists. They were cutting through us like the Grand Canyon. So much space for Crystal Palace to run into and cause problems. We were lucky not to be 1-0 down by the... Or sorry, 2 or 3-0 down by the time Andrew Postacoglu made changes. But we've made it to the point where we can make changes. And who does he bring on when we need a goal? And who does he take off? He takes off two of our most creative players... Kulisevsky and Madison. Yes, they've had a poor performance, but you're basically taking all creativity out from a midfield that wasn't creating chances anyway. And who does he bring on? Pape Matasar, Timo Werner and Richarlison. So you take off our two most creative players, right? I can't remember the other player that he took off. My head's all over the place. I'm fuming about it yesterday. And the three players that you bring on are Richarlison, right? No disrespect, a very, very average player. I've always said it, I don't get the hype around what because he does a pigeon and he high-fives the captain and he's a nice guy, I couldn't give a monkey's toss. Bob's a nice guy down at Sunday League. I don't want him playing for Spurs. He's not good enough. He is simply not good enough for this football club. He's had one purple patch and apart from that, he's been rubbish. He's not good. Oh, he scored in the week a penalty that he had to fight Madison for. You know, he's not good enough. He makes a couple of good runs. He's not a terrible player, but he's very average and not good enough for the level we want to be at. So we bring on Richarlison, who's pretty much going to do nothing. He's going to run around, but he's not going to do anything. We bring on Pape Matasar. OK, I don't have that much of a problem with that change, trying to show up the midfielder. So who else does he bring on? Does he bring on Wilson Odebert, our new signing who we hyped up to bring us some pace on the wings and hopefully score us a goal? No, we are 1-0 down. 
We need a goal. And the manager brings on the worst goal scorer in the Premier League. Let that sink in. When we need a goal in a tight game by scoreline, he brings on the worst finisher, not just at this football club, but in the Premier League. It just doesn't compute. It, it's, it, it's not going into my head. Why are you... Like, if you're winning a game, fair enough, because he makes good runs. But you're one nil down away from home. And you're bringing on Werner. Why? You know? Bring on Bergval or something. And in a midfield that had no structure because you do that, now even has less structure. We've got two midfielders on there. It was like we were playing some 4-2-4 shitty weird formation. But Charleston and Solanke didn't know what they were doing. Werner was acting like Werner on the wing, you know? It, those substitutions, the timing of them was pathetic. They should have been made at half-time. And then he makes them then. And then what does he do? 85th minute, you bring on our best option on the bench to bring into the midfield. The midfield that was struggling, and it's then that you bring on Ben Tagger. And for those last 10 minutes, we started to put a little bit more pressure on Palace. Why? Because Ben Tanker was on there, Saar was on there, and we actually had a bit more structure in our midfield. To not bring on Ben Tanker is disgusting, and to bring him on in the 85th minute, as I say, is just really, really frustrating. The substitution of Werner, it just doesn't compute. He took off our two most creative players to bring on two of the worst finishers at the football club, and a player who was brought in to structure the midfield Yet we only had two midfielders in there. These these tactics don't make sense. I'm tired of this fuzzy thinking, you know. He Brilliant change against Crystal Palace, bringing Pape Matasar on at half-time, you know. But he left um left Kulusevski on there. You're bringing Saar on, who's a player who does really well in that holding sort of mid-position because he can play it to the creator who's not there on the pitch because you've taken both of them off. I need to calm down because it's, it just feels like constant false dawns of hope at this football club. It really, really does. You start to believe in Ange again. You know, I've changed my opinion a lot. I think I'm entitled to, you know, flip-flopping, whatever. Football's about fine margins and your opinion can change weekly. But beginning of last season, I was fully behind Postacoglu. End of last season, I was struggling. After that Arsenal game, I was very close to saying Ange out. And I said the only reason I'm not Ange out at that point was because I don't want to see the same cycle repeat itself. Then the results start matching the performances and the stats. And I think maybe we're going in the right direction. Then the Brighton game happens. Then we see the West Ham and Alkmaar game. We think the Brighton game's a one-off. And then this shows us the Brighton game isn't a one-off. The players still lack the right mentality. And this manager, as I say, he's not as good as people think he is. Do I want him sacked right now? No. If we lose the next two or three games, I will. But right now, I don't want to see the same song repeat itself. And if we sack Ange... What does Tottenham Hotspur look like as a prospect of managing for any manager? Hey, come join this football club that sacked 15 or 16 managers in a row. None of them have been given time and they've all failed, you know. Even though Ange Postacoglu is cocking up, it will be repeating the same cycle. And who would want to join this football club, you know? Who are we actually going to get in? Then we've got to change the style of play potentially again. Bring in loads of players. Because these are Andrew Postacoglu's players. But anyone who isn't putting any blame on Andrew Postacoglu yesterday. Why are you not putting any blame on him? Why? You know? It just... I can't get it into my head why there's... Why there's people saying it's all on the players. You know, it's not Ange's fault that uh, that the players didn't turn up. No, it's Ange's fault that he watched the players not turn up and made the wrong decisions. And we ended that game 1-0 down, as I say. The substitutions were pathetic and the timing of them were poor. If we made better substitutions at half-time, as bad as we were in that first half, that game was there for the taking. We could have went on to win it, at least got on a draw, but no. He waited to make subs. Bring, you know, bringing on Ben Tanker in the 85th minute was a joke, and he definitely deserves some blame. He definitely deserves some blame. And also, you know, this man can't contradict himself, because it was only last week he said, these are the players I'm happy with, this is my squad. If it doesn't work out, I take the blame. But then when you start to hold him to his word, the people who love this manager, you know, go after you. But what's ironic is the people who love this manager and are backing him up are actually going against his own words. It don't make sense. Let me read out a quote from Andrew Postacoglu after yesterday's game, right? <clears throat> it's stuff like this, you know. He does speak a lot of sense, but he talks so much that he also talks a lot of bollocks, right? And there was the stuff a few weeks ago about, oh, I'm not fussed about conceding goals. It's how you lose games. It's stupid. But then he comes out with this yesterday in terms of the goal that we conceded. 
<clears throat> it was a poor goal to concede. It had nothing to do with playing out from the back. That can happen, right? Now, what he could have said here was, you know, it's not a problem playing out from the back. It's one of the only goals we've conceded playing out from the back. But you're saying it had nothing to do with playing out from the back when the goal literally came from a ball across our own box that was nicked by Crystal Palace when we were playing out from the back. Sorry, have we got Stevie Wonder who filled in on the, uh, in on the touchline for a couple of minutes? What, like, what are you on about? You can say that playing out from the back isn't a problem at this football club. Fair enough. But that's not what he's saying. It was a poor goal to concede. It had nothing, I repeat, nothing to do with playing out from the back. He just needs to shut up sometimes, this manager. He really does because he talks so much rubbish and he says some nice things and the stuff um, you know, want to hear. Let the fans believe, mate. You know, the fans can do what they like. And we're going to play attacking football and we're going to, you know... Adhere to the fans. But then he's coming out with stuff like goals don't matter. Or oh, sorry, not goals. Conceding goals don't matter to me. I'm okay with it. And it's how you lose games. I'm happy with the window, as I say. You know. And then when we start losing games and he gets blamed, his biggest fans go against his own word to attack the people who, you know, even criticise Ange Postecoglou. I don't know why this guy's got better PR than any other manager at Spurs. You know. I'm I'm rapidly losing faith. The only reason I'm not really ang out like after the Arsenal game was because I don't want to see the same talk repeat itself. The performances have been good this season and you can see improvements. But the most important numbers aren't the ones when it comes to possession shots, it's results. And that's four losses in nine so far this season. We lose next weekend to Villa, five losses in ten. That's a mid-table side pretty much, you know. That's where we are right now, ninth. You know, eight losses in our last 14 Premier League games. This year in the Premier League has been pathetic. Three away wins. Are we doing well in the Europa League? Yes. Yes. And yeah, you've got to give him credit because you can only play who's in front of you. But, you know, I don't think that's enough to go, well, hang on a second. He's pulled off all these brilliant results in the Europa League. Because we've played Valence, Vados, Carabag and AZ Altman. No disrespect to those sides, but they're nowhere near any Premier League teams. Everton would beat all three of them, you know. So... Look, if we go on to beat Galatasaray and Ange is the manager, if we go on to beat Rangers, if we go on to beat Roma, then OK, he's doing a smashing job in the Europa League. He's doing a good job in the Europa League. But is that enough to, as I say, you know, as much as the Europa League means to be not criticising for what he's doing in the Prem? No. If we go out of the Carabao Cup, lose next weekend, that's two trophies already. Or that's Champions League football already gone, and that's the trophy already gone. Then we're relying on the FA Cup, which don't even start until January. For the, so for the time being, we've got one trophy to actually go for. All of a sudden, this quadruple and this big season for Spurs, with these big signings in the summer, is leading to absolutely nothing. That City and Villa game is crucial. The pressure's definitely building on this manager. You can't blame all of yesterday on him, but there definitely is a lot of criticism that deserves to go onto his shoulders, as I say, because he said these were his players. He said if it goes tits up, as I say, it's on him. I've been praising him a lot for his decision-making, but the Brighton game in this game, they show, as I say, that He's not doing it anywhere near consistently enough. He really, really isn't. And it's a shame. I really want it to work out with this guy. It still could. I've not lost all faith. But the main reason why I don't want him sacked isn't because I think he's going to do great. It's because I don't want to see another manager come in, another project start, and another, as I say, set up, get let down by this ownership. And Postecoglou, though, he's had a lot more backing than Conte and other managers, and he's done worse. He's a worse start than Nuno. Look... Before I end the video, I've got to definitely give some praise to Crystal Palace, you know. Eze, what an unbelievable player. He's everything our fan base thinks Odebert can be or is. He's incredible. That assist yesterday is brilliant. I don't know why we didn't sign him this summer. I was calling for it pretty much every second video. And they set up well, Oliver Glass, and they get the win. But, you know, of course their first win of the season comes against Tottenham. I was, you know, tweeting back with HLTCO, a lovely guy on, um, on Twitter, a Crystal Palace fan. And um, we were tweeting back and forth about um, about you know Crystal Palace, and he was going, "I think there's there's one club that's more Spurs even Spurs, and it's Crystal Palace on Monday." And I, was, I sent one back with Silvio from the Sopranos with a little grin and said, "He really doesn't know, does he?" And yesterday he showed that Doctor Tottenham, a club in the relegation zone, really struggling, fans losing patience with a manager, and they pull out their big win, the rabbit out of the hat against Tottenham Hotspur. So. But look, credit deserves to go their way. Serious questions have to be asked about this football club, about these players and about the manager. Guys, I'm losing my voice. I'm going to end up sounding like Sean Dodge in a minute if I don't end this. So take care of yourselves. Have a smashing day. 
and as always, Comedy Spurs.